oftentimes when you're walking around with a camera following you, people say, what are you doing? Who are you? What's going on? <laughs> so when we started filming a year and a half ago, uh, and we were going back and forth from Dallas, and we were doing uh, all this, hitting the hitting media with it and doing radio interviews, Oftentimes, I don't know if I have like this sign above my head that's going around flashing like, uh, tell Stacy your story, but I love that people feel like I'm approachable and that they can come up and they can share things with me. We wake up, we're fixing to leave out in the car. It's me and my cameraman at the time, The Bachelor, Will. He is uh, filming and so he's already in the car setting up the GoPro, getting ready to take off and we're going to uh, head out, do some radio shows, and introduce the world to sexual suppression. And naturally, he's in the lobby, and I'm checking out of the hotel and, you know, finalizing the bills and everything. And so the lady behind the counter, she asks what I'm doing, why I have this cameraman with me. And I begin to tell her about sexual suppression and that we're here to release it through Dallas Media. And... Right before you know it, she just opens up and literally, you can always tell because someone's demeanor kind of goes soft. You can tell that their mind's thinking of what they want to say. You can tell like their heart is sensing whether or not they trust you. It's almost like this dun 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 moment and the whole world starts to slow down. And before you know it, they say... Can I tell you my story? And I say, yes, I would love to hear your story. And the next thing they say is one of two things. They either say to me, please do not ever repeat this to anyone, or I've never told this to anyone before in my life. And then they begin to tell me their one encounter of sexual abuse. Um, anyway, she said, where are you going today? I said, we're going to, to, me to media. I'm fixing to share with the world something I've discovered after being a hairdresser for 22 years, that people are sexually suppressed. And she was like, what's that mean? And I said, well, I was sexually abused as a child. And people who are sexually abused because we did not talk about sex with our parents we didn't know what to say it just wasn't a time it wasn't I mean we just you didn't talk about sex that there are literally probably millions will in this world who have been sexually abused and because they didn't know what to say or didn't have someone to talk to they suppressed it and she begins to tell me that when she was five years old, uh, her mother's brother, her uncle, would babysit them because her mother was a single parent. And that he full on had sex, sex and abused her sister, but that he was just fondle and touch her because she was so young. And that um, when she was eight years old, that he shot and killed himself. When and he was eight? When she was eight years she old. She was eight years old. Sorry, straight on. He shot and he killed himself. And so, when you walked up at that point in time. I kind of got in on the conversation. And when you left, what happened was... So, I, I took her back to that moment. And she just began to cry. She began to say, I have never shared this with anyone. I have carried around this guilt because of that day. That day at the funeral, we told my mother what he had done to us, and I felt so guilty because I didn't cry. I didn't feel remorse for this man. I didn't cry, but yet I went home and I cried when I told my mother what he had done to me. And wow, even telling you right now, that's powerful. To be eight years old and not understand the compassion of somebody's burden that they have literally taken their own life, but to understand at eight years old your pain and to cry over it. 
And so I gave her the website. I asked her to join the movement and write her letter. She's writing it down. She's like, what's that? And I'm like, pray it out, speak it out, write it out. And, uh, nope. yeah, it is. Well, it is. We had this whole conversation. I know what I just said to you is not what we discussed last night or in the morning, but I went back and pulled it up on the logo that Julie made and it says, pray it out, speak it out, write it out. Okay. So now I gotta go home and change the logo because after everything that was said last night, straight. Yeah. After everything that was said last night, after our discussion over breakfast this morning, there there is no doubt in my mind that it should be pray it out, write it out, speak it out. And really, there's no doubt in my mind that you should just be able to apply it any way you want to and it work for your life. The most important part is prayer, writing, and speaking. And I don't care in what order you do it. So, sometimes people do not want to be on camera. Sometimes people don't tell me their name. And that's fine. It's not my business. I just get to be used as like a vessel that God uses. A vessel for somebody to open up to in that one moment. And I leave that situation uh, doing one or two things. I either stop and I pray with them or I leave and pray for them, depending on what they want to do. But I know that a seed's been planted. And I always leave them with this advice. Pray it out, write it out, speak it out. I always tell them the Justice Love website at www.justuslove.org. And um, I give them a copy of my book, Be Beautiful Being You. I believe it's a guide to the 10 character commitments that could rebuild anybody's life from the inside out. I wrote that book uh, just to give us a free tool to victims or survivors of sexual abuse suppression uh, to help them, to have something near them, to nurture them, to rebuild them. I mean, it's not like this, boom, this instant thing that you tell your story and you let out this secret and your whole life's renewed. It really takes years and years and years of forgiveness and rebuilding yourself. So, sometimes I meet people and they want to film with me on camera. They really have reached a point that they have nothing to hide. Fear no longer controls them. They're not worried about who's going to see their story or hear their story or the judgment or the backlash that they might get. They're just ready to be like this empowering person that shares their story. Like, yes, that was me. That was who I was, and this is who I am. And I love that because those are the people that are inspiring other people to step forward and do the same. While Isabel, my publicist, Anthony Chisholm was with us of the Anthony Chisholm show out of Dallas. And um, we all sat down and had dinner one night. Before I knew it, the waiter, he had signed a release form to sit down and film with us. His name was Tito, and I'll never forget Tito. Um, he was so eager, like he was so eager to step forward and share with me that he had been sexually abused. And so the footage that you're going to see, we filmed it as though you're not going to know this, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you today. Tito had to sign a release form. Tito knew that we were going to talk about sexual abuse, but in order to set up, um, like, set up a, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a, what, Josh? In order to set up, like, a beginning, like, you know. Intro. Intro. In order to, thank you, in order to set up an intro for what was fixing to take place, I began to start and explain to Tito sexual suppression. But just to let you know, Tito did know what we were talking about. He knew because Isabel had been to the restaurant and um, she had asked if we could come in and film and we had to have release forms signed there. And so the, re the whole restaurant knew. They could see the cameras and they knew what we were filming for. But it was Tito's choice. What's most amazing is Tito told me off camera he was not supposed to work that night. And somebody called in and he got called into work. And that's really why he was felt, uh, filled with the Holy Spirit and just led to me. Like he felt like something was pushing to me. And out of all, all those tables in that restaurant, we sit down in Tito's section. That's powerful. So after uh... Thank you. 
Helping people who stand up and they're proud to say, I survived, overcame, I conquered, thank you, Jesus. I have beat sexual abuse suppression and it no longer has a hold on me. So, so eventually in this YouTube channel, you'll start to watch survivor stories. We're going to have them sit down on this couch or maybe we'll go to their house. We're not sure what we're going to do yet. We're not there and we don't have a plan, let me tell you something, this production is by faith and faith alone because I believe in something bigger than me, something bigger than you, and that is called God. And so wherever he takes me is where I go. 
But I want to say today, if you're watching this channel and you are a survivor or you're a victim or you are a adult who's never told anyone your story, you can always write W-R-I-T-E Stacy K S T A C Y K at gmail.com. I would love to read your story. Oftentimes we uh, share stories. We'll edit them. There will never, every letter that I have in my possession that a survivor has ever written me, I white out their email. I can't even get back in touch with them. Now this is the God's honest truth because from the moment I receive it, I white it out, the email, I white out the names and the locations, and I file that letter under their first letter of their name because it's their letter, so to speak. So, for instance, my letter would be filed under S, Female, Texas. So, you can locate letters through our blog at the award-winning Victoria Advocate. Uh, we've been blogging. I have been blogging with them for about six or seven years now. You can also locate them at the website, justicelove.org. And so you can write Stacy K at gmail.com to send me your letter. If you're interested in filming with us because you're a survivor, you have a, st a story of su success. Blah, 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 blah. Gosh, what's wrong with me today, Josh? If you have a story of success that you want to share to inspire someone else to pray it out, write it out, speak it out, you can locate me through all social media. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us at the website. I'm easy to find. You can leave a comment here on this YouTube video. Uh, if you want to be more private about it, then use my email. Everything's private. It's all confidential. It's not about pointing the femur, finger or blaming anyone. And never will I do so. This is about praising, giving credit where credit is due. And that's to you and me who have survived.